I'm Brody from Western Hunter, and this is our Compact Spotter Review. This is a big, like kind of a growing market. We work really tightly with outdoorsman's guys and they're having a ton of people call in about all compact spotters, a lot about the STC, um, but a lot about everything in general. The Koa, um, this new Vortex one that just came out, and then this Maven that's been out for a couple of years. Uh, but we're gonna talk about four. The other one was gonna be the Koa 553, um, but it's sold from Outdoorsman's, which might tell you something right there. Um, we got a lot of different price ranges here. This is 10, five, so this is 1,050. This is 12.99, maybe. And this is 24.49. Um, obviously, they're gonna be different. I mean, this thing is double the price of all these, uh, but we're gonna give you like a complete overview of exactly what we think, not with uh, like an optical chart in a, lab or in a inside anywhere we're just out here in the desert uh, we're going to tell you what we thought from first light all the way to harsh light now uh, we're going to go through a full we have a full chart with 10 different things we're going to talk about durability we're going to talk about value we're talk about price um, edge to edge clarity uh, just like the overall like ergonomics of it of the compact spotter some in the field like real world context for things you're gonna be looking for in a compact spotter. Um, because these are so new to the market, not a lot of people have kind of went through what they see in the field with these. What we're doing here is really just giving you considerations of how you spend your money. For my eye, it's really fine to get it. There's not a big range where it's focused for my eye. Where a lot of times like a swirl you'll be looking through it it's pretty good and then all of a sudden you rotate it and it's like oh man i can make it like a little bit better there's a big yeah. range yeah has the eye relief on that thing um it's pretty it's pretty good um i like having my eye super close to it mm -hmm. so most people might be like yeah i gotta really get in on it to see um See, I'm just kind of used to that. We can pack this out. I'm guessing there's a. I'm guessing this was supposed to be eight. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, double seven. Huh? Well, I'm like, seven, I'm like, seven or seven. Eight's just bad juju. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe in eights. <laughs> yeah, you don't believe in eights. Oh. <laughs> I really find this one's actually really good too. What's the range of that one again? The, the magnification range. Twelve to twenty-seven, I believe. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, it's all oh, quite a bit lower. Yeah. We should play first live animal. I know. What's up, bird? Um, un, non bird, non quail, rabbit counts. But you have to, if you see a if you if you see a deer, I will all want to see. It. But if you see a rabbit, you have to try to film it or something. Technically, the field of view is the best on the STC at 186 uh, compared to the S2 which is 173 and this Vortex at 168. STC only goes down to 17 yeah. and these all go down to um, like the Maven goes down to 12 and this goes down to um, 13. I it was 11, so 13. So the STC's field of view is better it's even at 17. Even at 17, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's wild. Mm -hmm. And then, like, on the high end, the field of view on the STC at 40 power is 102. So you can kind of compare that to the 39 power of the Vortex, and it's 89. So wow. in both categories, it's better. It, uh, it is better. It's so easy to grip. Yeah. On these little. Yeah. Whatever these. It's like a knurled spikes. knob, like on a barbell mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, it's exactly like that. It's very responsive. You're like a gym even rat. just you like, would like that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this one feels like a barbell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna this PR with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, one thing I really dislike already about this spotting scope is I can't rotate it. And Levi always makes fun of me because he thinks I'm looking at the wrong direction to look the other way. Yeah. But damn, I've just <laughs> come to love that. Yeah. Well, that's why I like a straight scope yep, over yeah. angle. Yep. Uh, ben and I used the ATC on our hunt in um, October last year. Mm -hmm. And or no, when it was like December, I guess. Mm. Um, and it was nice, but we had such tall grass that, like, it seemed like every time we set it up, we had to then reposition the tripod mm -hmm. to be able, be able to get that view out of the grass. Yep. And just being able to go from like your binos, locking your head into where you're looking at, and then throw this straight up and already be right there is really nice. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to be Team Razor, I'm pretty impressed. Like, yeah. I'm pretty dang impressed. I bet. <laughs> I mean, in terms of profile, mm -hmm. it is still, it is also the smallest. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even I if you straightened it out, even if it was a straight. It, like, yeah, they make a straight version of this, too. Yeah, and so I'm sure it's smaller. Uh, they. Shorter, anyways. Weight-wise, it is the exact same as that STC, which seems mm. crazy. Um, the lightest one is the Maven by one ounce. For some reason, when I held, held that Maven when we first got it, mm -hmm. it felt heavy. It, it does. It feels brickish. Yeah. <laughs> the, the length on the STC is 11.2 and the Maven S2 is 10.4, so it is a little bit shorter. The girth um, at the widest part is the same, though, 2.6. Oh, is girth a scientific term? Yeah. It is. <laughs> is it? You're talking about a small little spotter that you're going to throw in your pack and like mm -hmm. likely forget about, mm -hmm. you know, at some point or another. It's, they all seem pretty well built. I just really like how fine-tuned you can focus with these little grippy pieces. And when we first got it, like I set that up at the shop and mm -hmm. I felt that same thing. Compared to like the STC, it almost feels gummy, like less. Uh, the STC feels gummy. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a little less fluid or like fine tuny Like it's like almost that the rubberized. Um, there's like either a bit of friction or there's just not as much precise. Like kind of like on a nice like camera lens. Like yeah. When you're really like fine tuning your focus wheel or something, like you can tell the difference between like a free spinning, really nice wheel. But this kind of has. I mean, it's not bad by any means, but compared to like what that Maven felt like, um, it definitely feels a little bit less fine-tuned. Yeah, it's very responsive. I'm really liking that part of it. You do have the foot, which is convenient because you don't have to run a plate on it. But, I mean, if you got this hung up on something or mm -hmm. you had it on your backpack, you went to set it in there, you may catch it, drop it. You also have the eyepiece too, which is like another... Um, yeah, that's one thing. This is a two-piece where this eyepiece comes off, and but both of those are Same, just complete one-piece designs. Right. Um, so I think just by the nature of that, it's going to be less durable. Well, the whole thing with compact spotters is like there, it is a compromise. Right, exactly. Like every, like when you're going to buy a compact spotter, you're willing to compromise on brightness, magnification. Mm -hmm. I mean, in some regard, um, probably even a little bit of clarity, but just to get that smaller weight and size for your pack. Mm -hmm. But if you do get to somewhere you can see and you glass something with your, with your binos and you want to see like, oh, hey, is that a bull over there that I want to see? I want to go check out this gives you the ability to actually zoom in maybe take some video um, and see what you're working with without sacrificing anything in your in your pack I mean two pounds two ounces two pounds three ounces is really yeah. nothing I mean the spotter I think most of us carry around most of the time is closer to double that weight so four and a half to five and a half to carry a big BTX at eight pounds that's this that's is when this thing nothing came really in handy uh, last year was we found uh, Ben and I glassed up the buck that I ended up killing with the BTX at you know 2,000 plus yards away or so and then once we decided to take off after it we left the BTX and then we still had to relocate him and we had this guy and it was really nice to still be able to kind of reach out 
because all we had was I had 12s. I think he had 12s too. Um, so being able to kind of still pick apart something and try to find your deer without having to carry a pound of a BTX was really nice. Yeah, that's like a freaking perfect use case yeah. scenario for any compact spotter. It's just, it, to me, it's like another tool. It's not like, because like I like, like most time when I'm using a spotting scope, uh, it's like taking, it's taking video. Um, and I really want to be able to take in the most light. Um, so this probably, these aren't like my daily carry, but like that scenario you just described, where yeah. you're maybe like even at the truck where you're using a big piece of glass yeah. and then you take off after something, mm -hmm. instead of having to lug, you know, four extra pounds around, you just throw this in there. And for what you're doing, probably more close quarters, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, just setting it up and going. You're not like going to mm -hmm. sit there and glass with it for mm -hmm. a long time. Super easy setup. You're not having to balance. None of these need to be balanced at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's perfect for this. Balanced. Balanced. <laughs> balanced. I'm giving this actually on the comparable models, and I know this is more of like a discussion point, but I'm giving it a a seven just because like in terms of like the value yeah um it's definitely hard to say that like at the top range of this that it gets a 10 out of 10 with being the most by far expensive compact spotter out there yeah i went with a with a high seven also known as an eight <laughs> um the value part um because like that is going to be double the price yeah. Like a STC is going to be double the price where you're definitely not losing double the optical clarity. No. Like there's no, there's no way. No. And that's a good point too, is just the value for what you're getting out of the price point mm. is, is, you know, something to think about. Yeah. I don't think there's any denying that optically the, the swirl is the premier glass but mm -hmm. at you know two and a half three times the price point of the maven yeah yeah it's it's hard to you know if you're if you are going on a diy sheep hunt um and you're going to be counting rings and like it's you know legal or not legal by one ring or by mm -hmm. breaking the bridge of the nose. Um, that's where, to me, it makes more sense to do something like a STC or maybe even some, maybe even mm -hmm. go out of a compact spotter at that point, but, yeah. uh, and pay a little bit more money. But if you're just looking for a bowl with a little, you know, oh, with, for sure. with a legal six inch brow tine, yeah. I mean, these are gonna be more than enough for you. But that, you bring enough. up a good point with the magnification is having something that can push those limits mm -hmm. to make sure you're scoring yep. what you need to. So, yep. Yep. Um, you know, the Maven is only to 27, so mm -hmm. not exactly what you need for that exact purpose, but mm -hmm. it'll, it'll do plenty well for a bunch of other situations. Right. But for the purpose of, yep, that's a bull over there. It's probably the best one <clears throat> because it's, you know, it is the most compact. Mm -hmm. um, the optics are still pretty dang good. Uh, and it just doesn't take up a lot of room. Is there a better way to spend $2,500? That's tough. Oof. Like, with the... With this compact spotter, like, it's kind of like a... In a class of its own. So, I mean, if a guy's telling me I have $2,500 and I am just getting started, then absolutely I'd say spend that on a pair of NLs or just, you know, mm -hmm. just binoculars. But yeah. if you're looking for a compact spotter or just even like a small spotting scope, like even if you're in the market for like a 65, I would say that like this STC is probably the best spend at that money. Just because like you're getting a much higher range of magnification, the clarity's unmatched. Um, and yeah, are there like really good options like what we're using here? Um, less than that? Sure. But, um, I don't think that you're like totally past that point of diminished return 
at 2500 bucks with what you're getting with it. Like it's different enough. It's it's got enough magnification, enough clarity you're getting out of it to like make that price point make sense. Mhm. I think. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, best better place to spend $2500. It just kind of depends on you know, I don't think many guys are buying a compact spotting scope uh like as like one of the first pieces in their kit. They no. probably already have a BTX, right. or they have a big 85, 95 spotter. They probably have a good set of binos. Um, this is kind of like just another golf club in your bag mm -hmm. um, that's really specialized for certain uses. But then there are guys that I'm sure, you know, are probably in the market for a spotting scope that they don't, you know, need like a real big one. They don't need super high magnification. Um, I might steer them away from this as like their sole spotting scope. Mm -hmm. You know, there's... There's other advantages to like other spotting scopes out there that you'd probably spend a little less on. Yeah. For the guy that has, um, you know, even a pair of ELs or something like a good solid pair of binoculars that they're not going to upgrade for a while. Um, and they're really, and they just, they live in Colorado and they OTC hunt. So they mm -hmm. hunt over the counter elk where you know, they might need a spotting scope, especially like in those later seasons. They might, they might need a spotting scope for some of that. Um, but they're not really worried about killing a 380 bull, killing a 350 bull. They're like, you know what, I just want to go out there and shoot a something with horns, really. Squirrel. A legal bull. Oh, did you get a squirrel? Got a squirrel, sorry. Just had to mention it. <laughs> um, the, these are kind of like the perfect job. And for a guy who's maybe wanting to kill that little, a little bit, you know, they're worried about score a little bit more. The STC might be kind of perfect for them, uh, rather than carrying around a big spotter, um, but not going down into these lower tier spotters where you do lose some clarity at, yeah. at distance and um, in low light. Um, that might be perfect. What do you think of that thing, Kevin? I think that's pretty, not bad. I know, I guys been pretty impressed with it so far. I mean, just, Going from 13 to 39 is nice. I mean, this yeah. is really ticky tacky, but the magnification ring yeah. evidently makes kind of a strange sound when you're winding it out. Yeah, it's got almost clicks. Yeah. One thing to, to notice too is the, uh, the eye cups. Some are locking and some are just fluidly like mm -hmm. can come in and out. Mm hmm. Like the Maven, I know, has different... Yeah, the locks the in. The locks. But it makes it harder to fine-tune, so the... Yeah, it wants to be in one of those. Yeah. I don't really use those, but I know a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm noticing, for sure, I mean, it's even brighter now than it was 10 minutes ago, but, uh, like, at full magnification at, you know, what, 39, it's fairly dim. Mm -hmm. um, like more than it's not unacceptably dim like for just the but just with how bright it is outside how bright that Swarovski was mm -hmm. at 40 yeah. 10 minutes ago when it was darker like I would just have expected this to be pretty just vivid like bright at this point and it's it's got kind of like this uh, shadowy look to it um, which isn't you know totally bad it's just now you're com now we're comparing and so it's hard to not see some of those small things yeah mm -hmm. man i don't know if i like straight spotting scopes no i feel like i'm like oh see i love straight I love spotting straight scopes. Scopes. Yeah. Mm. it's so personal preference yeah it's so like what you're used to using yeah the thing i like about <clears throat> especially for a compact spotter which seems to make a lot of sense is like you're buying a compact spotter, so it's small, yeah. compact, in your pack. Yep. And a straight, for me, straight just seems like it just goes yeah. right into yeah. any spot. It makes total sense. Yep. The angle always just offers, like, there's going to be a pocket where it's not going to quite fit. Right, right. For me, too, if I'm glassing an area and I see something and I have my binos and I want to get in a little closer, I'm able to... Yep. go to the same spot when it's you know what I mean I don't have to adjust my tripod I don't have to yeah you I can, can just go right from, from one to the other my binos directly to my my compact yeah and without being able to rotate yeah can't do that at all I definitely feel more eye fatigue in this than I did in that Swarovski though yeah 
I it's, even feel like a little you, bit more eye fatigue in this. Than you I felt did. that. That's one thing, like, that seems to be noticeable right away is just, I, I don't think I can stay in this thing nearly as long as I could that mm. STC. Yep. It makes a lot of difference because, like, even if you're, I mean, a spotting scope, you're not going to be sitting there glassing from primarily anyways, but it just it accumulates no. over the course of a day or a hunt. You just slowly, it kind of wears on you. But yeah, a lot of times, like, last year in the desert, when we'd find something and put the spotting scope on it, like, it'd be, like, deep in a bush in a shadow somewhere, so you're really, like, you really have to pay attention and, like sometimes it'll take you to look in the same frame with the spine scope locked out still take a couple minutes to find what you're looking at and really kind of um, maybe even be able to describe it to somebody via radio yeah and yeah if you don't if you have something that gives you a headache while you're looking through it it can be detrimental when i back this thing out to 25 between 25 and 32 it's actually seems ideal mm -hmm. like clarity brightness when I crank it up to 40, it seems to lose a bit of you, all of those things. Yeah, you lose a lot of clarity in yeah. light, it seems like. The field of view on this STC is insane. Yeah. Yeah, they do something magical in there now to get that field of view. I mean, I, I, I felt the Maven, I felt the STC. This is the first time I've really handled this guy much, and it definitely doesn't feel as a uh, high quality mm -mm. like the weight mm -hmm. it just it doesn't have that weight mm -hmm. but um you know that doesn't mean everything either it's obviously weight is kind of the ideal of not making this thing heavy but it feels a little chintzier you know it doesn't feel like you could just throw that thing at the wall and it'd be fine which is kind of what both of these feel like i mean these uh -huh. are they're just like a solid like this thing is a, you know it's the same weight as all of them Oh, and they're all 56 millimeter objectives too. Yeah, yeah, that thing just is. Um, it's just like a, mm -hmm. you know, it just feels solid. Mm -hmm. All right, gun to your head, your money, which one do you buy between these three? Man, it's, it's pretty tough. Um, especially for like the things I do, I think like, I think this Vortex is the best value for me. Uh, Optically, it is still pretty darn good. Um, it's still the same weight as those. You're not sacrificing anything with that. Um, but it's half the price of the Swarovski. Um, and you're definitely not losing half of the quality and half of the optic, the optic quality, which is kind of the important part. Um, yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's the Vortex. I honestly really wanted to say the Maven, uh, just based on the value and the price point that it's at being, would you say it's like nine? Uh, 1,050. 1,050, so just over 1,000. Um, the rest of the glass I use is all Swarovski, and that's what I spend the predominant amount of time looking through, like, you know, and when I look through the Maven, the, like, honestly, the, the edge to edge is such a departure from like what I'm used to and kind of some of the bluing around the edge. I feel like it's worth it to me if I wasn't going to get that vortex. Um, it's probably worth it to me to just keep up with like the same quality glass that I'm used to looking at. And so that STC, uh, is definitely, I think where I'd put my money. Um, I'm a believer in the buy once cry once thing, but um, I have definitely felt <coughs> greater eye fatigue much quicker between these two, the Vortex and the Maven, than I did in that <coughs> spot or two. So I could see having that STC glassing in it much longer than I would most other just standard spotting scopes. So STC is what I'm going to say. What about you, Pev? Where, where's your money going? Um, for me, I'm, I'm biting the bullet on the STC. I think... Optically, it's just unmatched. Um, the edge to edge clarity, just how clear it is, the range magnification, the durability. I wish the, uh, the focus wheels were a little more fine tuned and smooth. Um, but 
you know, with a with a compact spotter, there are some trade-offs. Just in terms of your field of view, it this is this is hard to beat for sure. So, uh, like kind of how Kevin said, you buy once, cry once. It's it's worth with how much time we spend outdoors and hunting um, and behind glass out west. It's definitely worth the um, the extra amount just to be done and and uh, happy with your purchase, but. The Vortex is also a great option for, you know, way less of a price point. So if if the SCC isn't in your budget, you're not going to be disappointed with the Vortex. You just need to know it's, it's not in the same optical um, ballpark as the SCC, but um, for value, it's it's pretty pretty tough to beat in terms of what you spend and what you get in return. Everybody's looked through the Koa. Yeah. Does that factor in? Does that change your decision at all? If that's included, that color is nice. If if that was included, I think that would probably probably have taken taken it for me. Um, but I'm surprised as hell, I'm impressed, I should say, with the uh, the razor. Um, mm-hmm. It's always hard to know until you get them side by side. So um, my gut says that color probably would have um, taken it for me, but um, without having it here, I'd still keep my decision where it is. Man, I like that Koa. Um, the handful of times that I've gotten to sit behind it, it's always really impressed me. I think optically, from what I remember, it's a little bit better than the Razor um, at about 1800 bucks, so quite a bit less than the STC. Um, the only thing with the Koa is they don't have any like armoring on their optics. It's just like, yeah. aluminum. Like, yeah. It's just mm-hmm. so... They're, it, they never felt as durable, and they don't. They put a lot less coatings on their lenses because yeah. um, we're kind of more for astrology, and those le- coatings just aren't near as durable. Um, but with the cheaper than the STC, a little bit better glass than the Razor, Echo is hard to beat. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. It's for that price point. Um, I would take the Koa most likely for in terms of just value uh, and what you get in return. Um, you're saving still quite a bit of money um, before you get to the SCC, and you know, speculating it's a few hundred dollars more than the Vortex. Um, but I think I would I would rank mine as Swarovski in terms of um, you know as the, as the number one, but Koa in terms of value for sure would be right there with with the vortex the co is also an angled right yes oh they do make that in a straight they do make it in straight yep. okay yeah i mean if if the straight options staring me in the face there too that's going to make it a lot harder because i'm definitely more a fan of the straight body than the angled mm-hmm. all right so we're back to the truck just tallying up uh, the scores that we each gave to the scopes that we um looked through the most uh, i had the swarovski sdc uh, I was kind of lucky there. It's definitely, I think, the best in class as far as all the spotters go, the compact spotters. Easily the best optical option. Um, the outlier is just the price. So $24.49 um, because of that. So overall, I give it a 92 out of 100. Um, the only reason why it's not 100 out of 100 is just because I think a lot of guys are going to look at that price tag compared to some of the other well performing compact spotters in that category and not really see the benefit. So. That's where I kind of lost some points for me, um, just in terms of value. Um, like for me personally, and this is all subjective, when I think of value, I think of the most performance for the money. Um, in this particular case, I think there are some really good options out there, particularly like the Vortex, uh, which Brody's going to talk about, um, which is significantly less money. Uh, however, um, nothing disappointed in terms of performance size, build, quality, um, low light, edge to edge clarity, um, ergonomics, durability, all of that was was solid with uh, the STC. So that was my pick, 92 out of 100 is what I gave it. Yeah, I think that's very fair for that optic from what I've looked through it. Uh, I had the new Razer HD. Uh, I gave it a 76 out of 100. I felt like that was pretty fair. Um, The thing that kind of impressed me the most was the overall optic clarity was way better than I anticipated. 
Um, it's not uh, Swarovski, um, but it is from what I've seen from Vortex, it is like their very top end. And it, it's pretty impressive. I mean, you don't lose a lot. Um, the drawback to the Razor is really just, it doesn't, it feels a little chintzy in your hand. It doesn't feel as solid as like the ATC or even the Maven for that matter. Um, you know, still a really good scope for, uh, you know, that guy who doesn't want to pack around. A uh, big spotting scope, he doesn't need that kind of, uh, it's still going to really get the job done and uh, I think you'd be happy with it. So I uh, primarily reviewed the Maven S2 spotting scope and uh, the main takeaway from uh, the Maven for me is really emphasis on value. Um, at this price point, which is around $1,000, $1,100, it, it's hard to it's hard to beat. Um, it, it's not gonna line up with the SCC optically, um, and they're totally different beasts. So uh, if you know that going into it, that if you have a budget that's kind of in that sub one thousand dollar range, uh, the Maven S2 might be something you might consider looking at. Um, the ergonomics of it really stood out for me. That it seems to be constructed pretty well. I really like the fine tuning of the um, the focus knob and the magnification. Um, I would say one of the downsides would be the magnification range is not going to be as much as you as you get with the STC, um, but pretty good field of view still. I believe the magnification is from a 17 to a 27. Um, 12 to 27. 12, 12 to, seven, uh, 12, to 27. 12 to 27 um, yeah. So still pretty good for a compact, but um, it's not going to you know, be as much as the STC, and uh, it's not supposed to be. It's a different, different yeah. type of optic. Um, and one other thing is we noticed, and again, this goes to just optical clarity, but a little bit of a blue blue hue, um, you know, when you're when you're glassing through it. But for that price point, the value um, I scored it at a 72 out of 100, um, and again for around a thousand dollars, you know. If you wanted to, to save your budget a little bit more, you might be looking into bumping up into the Vortex, which is, it's not out yet, but probably a few hundred dollars more. Um, and then from there, if you wanted to bump up, options like the Koa would be a good um, mm -hmm. next step. But yeah, it, it was a great time reviewing all three of these. I personally picked the Swarovski SCC. I know we all did as the, the shining light um, mm -hmm. optic. I would say one thing's important to mention is is like this Razer HD isn't released yet. It should be pretty soon, I think, in the next Yeah, three August weeks. 24th is what they're saying. Cool. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but it does seem like they've taken that time to kind of observe and study what's out there on the market already. And I think they did hit the nail on the head in terms of like what uh, is filling a void with performance, price point. Um, and we were all pretty impressed with it. Mm -hmm. Not to say that Vortex doesn't make... Uh, Great, great optics in, in some pieces, but this was definitely, I think it surprised all of us on how well it performed today. Yeah, I think that's gonna get used at our office <laughs> yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks you guys for watching uh, our review today. It was a little bit new for us, just kind of in the field, more of a blue collar review. We didn't want to overthink it. Um, hopefully we answered some of the questions you guys are kind of you know, pondering on your own. We know we get a lot of these questions at Outdoorsman's. Um, and you know to the Western Hunter channels too. If there's anything else on these scopes or others that you guys are looking for reviews on or uh, have questions about, uh, let us know. You know we feed off of what you guys want to hear. We're only valuable as, as much as you guys get from it. So um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a lot of really fun reviews coming up, um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Catch you next time.